Lawrence Lemer is the author of the book Madness Under the Royal Palms, Love and Death in Palm Beach. The work of narrative nonfiction is an intimate story of the mega wealthy in America's number one resort community, our very own Palm Beach. So without further ado, please help me give a very warm Devonshire welcome to Lawrence Lemer. I know why I'm here today. And that is because after you hear about my controversial book about Palm Beach, you're going to be so happy you live here. And if you don't live here, you're going to want to live here because uh, you're going to see what Palm Beach does and what, ha what so, so often has happened to Palm Beach, uh, this strange, fascinating place. And this book of mine, which created quite a controversy over there, so much so that the police chief, chief said I should have security just because of the things that were in this book. But it's nothing more than a truthful book about the realities of Palm Beach and life on that exquisite, beautiful island. The, 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 the real founder of Palm Beach, and of Florida really, is Henry Flagler. Henry Flagler is one of the geniuses of American life. He, he, he along with, with uh, John D. Rockefeller, was, was the founder of Standard Oil. When, when Rockefeller began with his foundation, uh, Flagler's wife was ill with tuberculosis. And in the, in, the, in, the, in the 1870s, Florida was a place you went if you were sick. You'd see the ads in the newspapers in the north, and if someone was sick or dying, you came down to Florida. His wife had tuberculosis. He came down to Florida in 1878 and, and fell in love with it. Three years later, his wife died, and he married the, her, her nursemaid. And he decided he wanted to build. They, they, they would go to Newport in the summer, the home of the kind of the, the elite of America. And they really weren't totally accepted. She came from that background. She wasn't from an elite social background. And they really weren't accepted. And he decided he was going to build a new world in Florida where he would be accepted. And, and in the north, in St. Augustine, he built a great hotel where he thought the wealthy of America would come. They, they didn't come. And, he, 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 and, and his wife was having a lot of emotional troubles. Uh, she had ha had these, dream, these, these visions of grandios grandiosity. She was in the, the border of madness. And he began these other relationships. In 1891, he was on a, uh, a, a, a cruise to the Caribbean. He was 61 years old. And on the cruise was Mary Keenan, 23 years old. 23 years old. And they began a 37 year, year difference in age. And they began a, a relationship. Now, I don't mean to be a cynic, but I think if Mr. Flagler had been a shopkeeper or a tobacco farmer, I don't think that relationship would have happened. In any event, they, bega they began this relationship. Flagler had other, other mistresses, including a woman in Syracuse, New York, whose husband sued him because of this. But, 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 but again, he had this veneer of, of propriety. And he went down and he decided he would build further. And he built a railroad south that ended up in Key West. That was a time when in Florida, the biggest city in the south was Key West. Key West was about 25,000 people. But all the way from the north down, there was very little except scrub and jungle. And he found this island, this 13 mile long barrier island called Palm Beach, and he decided he would build a resort there. And he built the Royal Palm Gianna Hotel in a year largely with African-American laborers. They built a 1,200-room hotel, all wooden hotel. It was then probably the biggest hotel in the world and the biggest wooden hotel structure ever. And the wealthy became to come. This became the place to come in the winter. And the wealthy came down in their private cars, and they'd spend a few weeks in Palm Beach each winter. All kinds of people came down. I've written about the Kennedys. Uh, Mayor Fitzgerald would come down with, with Rose because he wanted to be around the wealthy. But all kinds of people would come from across the eastern part of the United States. He continued his relationship with Mary Keenan. He had built the hotel. He was the most powerful man in Florida. And he convinced the Florida legislature to put through this legislation that would, al that would allow him to divorce his wife. He divorced her. He merrily, immediately married her. And he built the White Hole Mansion, which we now know as the Flagler Museum. This 55,000 square foot, massive, magnificent building right next to the Royal Pontian Hotel. And they were truly the king and queen of Palm Beach. They would give uh, uh, these, these balls that would start at 10 o'clock at night and go all night long, these mass balls. They, there would be balls at, at the Royal Pontian Hotel. And again, it was a place to be. He died in 1913 and leaving her the wealthiest woman in America, 
worth over $100 million. She felt very lonely, she was very sad, and in 1916, she married her, her childhood beau, Robert Chandler, from Louisville, Kentucky. The most crucial legal document in Palm Beach is the prenuptial. I mean, that's, that is what matters in Palm Beach. Everybody has their own prenuptial. And Mary Keenan had a prenuptial with Mr. Chandler, but after a few months, he convinced her that, uh, that she should, uh, should change that and give him a few million dollars if she happened to die. Two months later, she died. The two, the, the two most authoritative researchers into this biography feel that, conclude, both of them make the same conclusion, that she died of syphilis, either given by Mr. Flagler or by Mr. Chandler. Now this is, again is a part of the history of our times that people don't talk about, why things are sanitized. But this is not gossip, this is, this is, this, this is, this is the way it was. But it really is the classic story of Palm Beach, isn't it? 